The Primate in-circuit production programmer is the newest addition to the CCS family of in-circuit programmers and debuggers for microchip PIC microcontrollers. Let's take a look at how the Primate programmer can be used in a manufacturing environment to program circuit boards just prior to shipping. The Primate is able to program up to eight devices in parallel, allowing it to program multiple boards at once, either under the direct control of a PC or as a standalone programmer. Let's begin by programming eight boards in parallel while the Primate is connected to a PC under the control of CCS Load. Supply power to the Primate, then connect it to the PC's USB port before invoking CCS Load. Otherwise, CCS Load will not recognize the Primate as being connected. Using modular cables, we'll connect eight boards to the Primate. Connect a modular cable to each board and plug each cable into the back of the Primate. CCS Load is a programmer control software utility that allows a user to program microcontrollers along with performing diagnostics and modifying operational settings. Using CCS Load, we'll program the boards with a blinking LED hex file created in the CCS C compiler Quick Start Webinar. Hex files created by the CCS C compiler enable CCS Load to automatically choose the correct target device. If the hex file was created with another compiler, you will need to select the target device manually. Next, we'll select all eight slots for programming and set up the programmer to supply programming power to each of the target boards, relieving the user of the need to power each target board with a separate power supply. To set the voltage level, click on the Settings tab. Use a slider to specify the target board supply voltage. The default value is 5 volts, but the supply voltage can be set as low as 2 volts. However, the target board in this example requires 5 volts. The programmer can supply up to 200 milliamps to each of the target boards for programming at the selected voltage. Be careful. If the voltage is set to a higher level than the target board can handle, or if the target board is powered with a separate supply, there is a risk of damaging or burning out the board. Click the Write to Chip button to begin programming. After programming is complete, a message window will appear stating that the programming has completed without errors. Now we'll show how the Primate can be used in standalone mode, giving it the ability to program devices without a PC. We'll prepare the Primate for standalone use by loading a hex file into its memory. The Primate can store four programs up to 512 kilobytes in size in its internal memory for later use. Let's store the hex file into memory slot number four. Click the Write to Memory button to store the program in the selected memory slot. After programming is complete, a message window will appear stating that the programming has completed without errors. Once the hex file is stored, disconnect the Primate from the PC. When the Primate is powered up in standalone mode, a startup screen will be displayed before loading the main menu. Configuration settings for up to eight jobs can be set while in standalone mode. Scroll through the configuration menu using the next and previous buttons. For each job, the user is able to write and verify a program on a target board, select which memory slot to program from, select which target boards to program, enable auto verification, configure the voltage source, set a serial number, or read the ID from a target board. We're going to completely configure job 1 before handing the programmer off to manufacturing. We'll start by setting up job 1 to program the target boards using the hex file loaded into memory slot 4. Scroll back to slot 1, then press enter to enter the file selection submenu. Scroll down to slot 4 using the next button, then press enter to select slot 4. You can pre-select the target board locations to program for this job. Select target, then press enter. All eight targets are enabled for programming in this example, as indicated by the asterisk above each target board number in the lit LED on the control panel. To disable programming for a target, Use the next and previous buttons to select a target board, then press the Enter key to enable or to disable programming. Once your selections are complete, press the Back button to exit and return to the main menu. Since we want to make sure that all of the target boards are programmed correctly, we will leave Auto Verify set to Yes. Configure VDD is used to specify whether the target board will be powered from its own supply or if the Primate will generate power for programming. The LCD display is indicating that the target board will be using its own power supply. However, for this example, we're going to configure the Primate to generate power. 
Use the Enter and Next buttons to access the generated VDD submenu. The previous and next buttons can be used to adjust VDD up or down between 2 and 5 volts in 1 tenth volt increments. Once you've selected the desired voltage, press Enter to accept the voltage settings and return to the main menu. The Primate is now ready to be brought into the manufacturing area for standalone programming. To operate the Primate in standalone mode, just connect the Primate's power supply and target board cables as shown in the previous example. Press Enter. The LCD screen displays the programming status for each target. We can see that there was a problem programming target board number 5. We can wait for the Primate to automatically display a status message for each target or use the previous and next buttons to quickly scroll to that target location. In this case, the no pick detected message was caused by a loose programming cable on the target board. I'll reconnect the cable and perform the right operation again. Press the back button to return to the main menu and begin another right operation. We can see that all targets were successfully programmed. Once the programming complete message is displayed, it's safe to disconnect the target boards or press back to go back to the main menu. The Primate can also program target boards with hex files contained on SD cards. The SD card needs to be 2GB or smaller and formatted in FAT32 to be read by the Primate. We'll reconfigure job 1 to program the target boards using the timer hex file contained on the SD card. Scroll back to slot 4, then press Enter to enter the file selection submenu. Scroll down to timer using the next button, then press Enter to select. You're now ready to program the target boards with file timer. You can see how this feature gives manufacturing the ability to program a board using a master file that had been approved for production and archived for safekeeping. CCS offers several programming and debugging solutions to fit your needs, ranging from production and handheld programmers to powerful in-circuit debuggers. The Primate Production in-circuit programmer can reduce manufacturing costs by programming up to eight boards in parallel. With a simple-to-use push-button interface, standalone operating mode, and ability to provide programming power, technicians can configure boards without the need of a PC or a separate power supply for each target. Priced at only $899, it's a powerful and cost-effective tool for your company to streamline your manufacturing operation. Order yours today.